today, Rocket King has given up his spot on Rocket Stove Row to make room for a new Rocket Stove made out of paint cans and perlite. Hi, it's Tom from Green Shorts, and lately a lot of my builds have been a little more complicated, like the outdoor shower or Max, the flu pipe Rocket Stove. Today I want to focus on simple and accessible, and that means reusing some paint cans and perlite to make a simple, inexpensive rocket stove. The reason I want to move towards simple and inexpensive is because I believe everybody needs to be using a rocket stove in some form or fashion. And when it comes to rocket stoves, there's lots of options. And they can get a bit expensive. There are a fair amount of uh, number 10 can or paint can rocket stoves on YouTube, but they use a hole in the side and just one can. I want to do something different and, and that is I'm not going to do a hole in the side. I'm going to do a firebox underneath and bring the riser all the way through. But I'm going to do that with two paint cans instead of one because I want the riser to be taller. I'm also going to insulate the inside of this riser with perlite to make that metal pipe riser as hot as possible, improving the draft and the efficiency of the rocket stove. It's starting to rain, so let me quickly make some measurements, and then I'll cut my riser out of a piece of scrap metal. The measurement that I need is gonna be the height of two cans together, plus three inches. And I'm gonna use that dimension to cut my riser pipe. So that's 15 plus three is 18. I'm gonna cut off the rusty section here, as well as that solid bottom plate. Well, I've still got this pipe uh, with a nice long mass to it. I'm going to cut some notches in the end of it to uh, serve as the pot standoffs on the top end of this riser. I'm gonna do that with my Twisted Sharpie from Greg's Garage. If you'd like a Twisted Sharpie for yourself, I'll put a link in the description below over to gregsgarage.com where you can pick one up. With the riser pipe cut, now it's time to prep the cans. I'm going to start by using a can opener to take the bottom out of one of the cans. And then I'll cut off the handles. Now I'm going to clean these cans up a little bit with a wire brush. The rusty one will need a little more work. I could have just bought these at the Home Depot for about four bucks a piece, but why pay when I've already got perfectly usable paint cans ready to be reused. Clean up the bottom here carefully. And the lid. Not perfect, but it'll do. The next step is to trace and then cut out circles equal to the circumference of the riser pipe. I'm actually going to cut out inside this line because the, the width of the tip of the marker was a bit outside the edge of the pipe. I need to reduce this circle a little bit. I got to be super careful with the grinder here because this metal is so thin. Easy for me to cut inside and then uh, make it a little bit wider if I need to. Clean this up a little bit. Couple of high spots. It was at this point in making the video that I decided to scrap the lid. Reason being 
that if this is sitting outside like this, it's just gonna be a place for water to sit. So what I've decided to do is I'm gonna cap the top of the rocket stove around the pipe with a thin layer of cement. This will be the top, this will be the bottom. I'm gonna go ahead and use the, the ledge here on the top of the paint can for the top just because when I put the concrete in, it'll add a, a little extra rigidity to that circle. Self-tapping screws. I'll start by rounding these over a little bit on the anvil. Much better. I could probably get by just doing a couple of these holes, but I think I'm gonna do five on each. Now I'll repeat this two more times. Trying to space this about one third. Nice tight seam. Doesn't have to be airtight though, because this is just holding the perlite in. All right, the cans are connected. Now I'm gonna clean up the riser pipe. Now that our pipe is cleaned up, I'm going to marry the pipe and the cans. I'm gonna leave a little bit of the pipe, about half an inch, sticking out the bottom of the can. I need to clean this edge up a little bit. The next step is to support the bottom of the can so that the pipe can still stick out a little bit. And then I'm going to fill the cavity between the pipe and the cans uh, with perlite. I'm going to start at the very bottom though with a mixture of perlite and concrete. Uh, that'll help hold the pipe in place, but it's also going to provide a little bit of weight to the bottom of this chimney to help with stability. One quick note about perlite. It is a mineral, but you don't want to breathe the dust. It's also better not to get it on your hands or skin as well. So use precaution when you're using this material. When I've got the cement to the consistency that I want it, I'm gonna mix in some perlite. Don't tell my wife I'm using her good salad tongs. Just kidding. The perlite is actually gonna start absorbing water, which is why this mix is gonna look dry, drier than it was. And that's in part why I mixed it up a little wet. I'm adding water because I want to add more perlite.
All right, the mix is ready. And now I'm gonna spoon it into the chimney between the cans and the pipe. I'm aiming for about three inches deep on the bottom. I'm gonna tap this with a hammer to get the perlite and cement mixture to settle in. I'm also gonna vibrate it with my Sawzall to settle it down further. That ought to do it. Now I'm gonna fill the rest of the cavity with pure perlite. See the dust? To make sure I maintain the center point for the riser. And then I'm gonna cap it off with the cement and perlite mixture. and then smooth it out with a slight slope down away from the chimney towards the edge of the can. Trains here. Before the concrete dries on the surface of the metal, I'm gonna clean it off. I'm gonna let this cure for a couple hours. So I know I said at the beginning of this video this is gonna be simple, and there were a few technical elements in that last section. And I guess my thinking was simple in terms of comparison and simple in terms of number of steps. Because this is the first go round on this particular type of stove for me, it may be a little more complicated than need be. There's probably some opportunities to simplify. So let me know in the comments below any ideas or suggestions that you have to make this project a little more simple. Speaking of simple, while the chimney is drying out, I wanna start on the base, which is very simple, and cheap for that matter. I'm using some 48 cent concrete pavers that I picked up at Home Depot, and my last piece of salvaged grill grate. And I'm gonna build the base around my metal ashtray, which works with all of my rocket stoves. But since I'm normally just using them one at a time, I've only made one ashtray. Now, I really wanted to find clay bricks for this, but my Home Depot didn't have any that didn't have the holes in them. So I thought I'd give these concrete pavers a try. Now, I don't think the concrete's gonna handle the heat as well as a clay brick would have, but let's consider this a test. So the first level of pavers goes down flat for stability. It's enough for clearance at the top of the ashtray, and then our grate is gonna sit on top of that. Then the next three pavers 
form our firebox on top. And I'm not going to put this together with any adhesive, just because if these pavers start to fail, I'll want to be able to switch them out. A nice simple firebox, ready for the chimney. The concrete has cured enough for me to move on to the next step, which is to level the top of the riser and paint the stove. I've got a couple of high points on my pot standoffs here, so I'm going to test this and then level them out. So I'm going to grind the high points down so I've got a nice level pot surface. In reality here, all I really need is three of these to be high and level and that'll be enough, but I think this is good. I can always tune this later if I need to. A few final touches with the file. Alright, that ought to do it. Now I'll finish it off with some high heat spray paint. Added a second coat to the outside, and now I'm going to paint the bottom. Alright, the paint is dry. Let's go make a fire. This thing is nice and substantial now. I'm definitely glad I got this bottom weighted though, since it's pretty tall. I'm gonna set this right on the base, and then my scrap of sheet metal goes underneath the front here. All right, let's make a fire. Got to draw. It's pulling that smoke back. I hear the rocket. Flames coming out the top. Let's see how big I can get it.
All right, well, I am pleased with this. I can see a little bit of steam coming out, probably from moisture from the concrete. So I'm probably gonna stop right here until this has a chance to cure a little bit more before I fire it up again for a test. If you appreciate what I'm doing here on YouTube and would like to help support the channel so I can keep making videos just like this, please check out the perks I have available over on Patreon. Special thanks to my very first patrons. Greg Porter from Greg's Garage, Chad from Mancrafting, Amy Glass, Adam Ryder, Jordan Yoder, David the Good, Joe Scott from Answers with Joe, and Tim Schmoyer from Video Creators. Thanks y'all. As always, our mission here at Green Shorts is to help you see green so you can be green. And save a little green by doing it yourself. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and share. Keep the great comments coming. Give me all your great suggestions on how we can make this stove better. And we'll see you in the next video.